Hey, I'm Nick Catalog Gamer. Welcome back to PCM23 Lions. This is episode number seven. At this moment, we're in a pick your battles situation. And the battle that I am choosing to have is that we are returning to the tour of Saudi Arabia unnecessarily for a benefit. And the benefit is right here, right now. A dirt slash gravel sector of the final stage. It's only one star. But you quick sim that, and somehow the field ends up with all sorts of splits. Did it hurt the guys a bit going through it? Oh yeah, everybody is tired. But the entire team has made it through. There's 85 left in the peloton. There's six riders left off the front. And we've got 20k to go till the finish line to hang on to four riders inside the top 10, including a third place for the overall. Now the reason why I pick this battle is that A... Without doing this, those guys are losing time. Our goal of winning a stage is achieved, but I'm not gaining any bonuses, no additional pluses that are going to contribute later. A top three in the overall, just by do that. 6K to go and setting up a sprint train right now and sprinting out with Gibbons and maybe scoring a top three on this stage. Maybe, probably not. There's a lot of fatigue. Maybe other teams are fatigued. Sprinters aren't going to be quite up for it. Could make a real, real difference now. Arafane, of course, is going to lead out Gibbons. We know that much. Uh, I don't want the whole team here at this point because it's, you know, 5K. Let's gel up for everyone. Kudos has a 76 flat, so we might just use him. Uh, so does Zarai. The other guys are just going to hold up the rear, I think. And here we go, Zarai leading us out. Come on, let's get over you guys. Abdiya, get out of the way. 3.5k. We'll get on to uh, Kudos. There we go, at 3.1. 2.3, he's gonna start his sprint. On to Arafane. Oh, Arafane gets blocked off there. Sprint for all, particularly Gibbons. 1.1k out. Slightly technical, slightly uphill. More uphill than I thought it was. That eats up the last of his red bar a little bit before the finish line. He's not going to crack the top three, but most importantly of all is Vanderpool. Easily handles that slight hill and takes the win. We secure are four guys in the top 10 overall. And that was why I picked this battle. We weren't gonna beat Vanderpool. The circumstances just weren't there for it. But that key one is we get four guys in the top 10. It's really great for some points scoring. Not that I think we're in a fantastic position to start boosting nations right now, but hey, somehow we've already boosted one, haven't we? So there's that factor. It could result in in a plus in noteworthy results for us for getting a podium in the overall race. Let's hope that we did manage to get that podium and that these three guys didn't just steal enough seconds to bump us down to, say, fourth place. And Kovacar has done exactly that. <laughs> he stole exactly enough seconds, four to be exact, to jump from the fifth, sixth grouping to the last spot on the podium. 23 seconds down, Vanderpool taking the win away from Ackerman right at the end, gaining the four seconds that he needed. But uh, I don't think we're gonna get the noteworthy result now with a fourth place. That's still, that's a very good amount of points earned for the team, nevertheless. We begin the Tour of Oman with the same objective and two of our biggest objectives of the year right at the start now actually that last race we did manage to get our uh, plus for finishing in the top five in the noteworthy uh, results department so that's a huge plus for us as we go inside 8k now tour of oman gibbons is still not a favorite however in a traditional sprint unlike that last race where we were on the back foot i mean matthew vanderpool and others were much too good for a, a mediocre sprinter like Gibbons. But here, 
the sprinters aren't better than good. So while he's still not a favorite, he's absolutely in with a better shot than he would have been uh, otherwise. So with 3K to go, we're all set up. Everybody's got their, their beautiful red bars right now. And we're on to Kudos, and Kudos is going to start his sprint here at 2K. And you can see how he's just not much of a sprinter. He gives us just a little bit of a lead out. Oh, Arafane, where Gibbons didn't hold Arafane's wheel. 400 meters, but Gibbons is too far behind. Arafane was. Arafane gave him a solid lead out. He couldn't follow. Lawless takes the win. Velgren, Scott, had Gibbons been on Arafane's wheel, he's got a shot. He's got a shot on this one, at least to get a podium. Wasn't to be. Final 8K. I've been waiting on a couple team members to get up here on stage two. Totally flat bit of a longer stage but we're not really out front and we're we're squeezed up against the side here abdia finally has made it up here mansuri also was the other one who uh it was taking him a really long time but we're already inside 5k uh, let's go ahead and gel up for the rest of these guys and let's get mansuri to the back abdia now take it over zarai will take over soon and you know we're into that final run everybody's fresh we are more or less near the front, but you can see how easily other teams just come up beside us uh, as my guys just don't have the pace that they need. We're going to have to switch. Oh, and then this field is cutting across. This is not the kind of lead-out position you want. We're already down to 1.9. Uh, sprint for kudos. Take to the outside. Take to the outside. There's an open lane out here. Arafane. Ooh, not a good sprint for Arafane. You can see how he actually lost Kudos there as he uh, started his sprint. And then for Gibbons, while technically we could have gone sooner, it's just we couldn't get in position. There was too much traffic. Here, here's the thing about sprinting. If you have a dominant sprinter, they can start from whatever position and they have a chance to win. But when you have an inferior sprinter position getting to the head of the field at the time of their sprint is as important, if not more important, than the amount of energy that they have remaining. Positioning is huge. Even on a wide open track like this one, we get caught out behind and Alexei Lutsenko takes second. Lipens take first. I mean, come on. Lutsenko is not a sprinter. Gibbons only got 11th. We get caught up in traffic. It's not good. And that's why having a good, high flat rated lead out squad is important. And that's something I don't have. We have Gibbons, who's eh, as a sprinter. We have Arafane, who is even worse as a lead out guy. Both are a step up from what we had a year ago. And it's great. And we've pulled little itty bitty results here and there so far but beyond that kudos is the only writer that has a okay flat rating and that okay flat rating is what's necessary it's the flat rating that gives that solid lead out pace so when we're trying to push from 14k out getting to the front when we can't even successfully get to the front going at a 99 we have issues because then yeah, what happened right there? We're we're caught up starting the sprint from probably 16th wheel. Somebody who is a 72 sprinter is not going to out sprint a 75 sprinter when he's already two bike lengths behind him and with all sorts of traffic in front of him. You've got to be clear of the pack. He's got to start behind his teammate second wheel overall or third wheel overall to have a chance in the sprint. Why? Because the others are as fast and faster so he can maybe hang on if he has one or two bike lengths on those guys he can maybe hang on if he starts his sprint at the same time that they started their sprint and he's only a little bit slower he's going to lose a bike length but maybe he's not going to lose two but what he's not going to do is gain he's not going to overtake other sprinters so you got to get him to the front that's our battle that's the harder battle right now than it is gibbons himself Gibbons can almost keep up with those guys. His teammates have a rather difficult time getting him into 
a position where he's let out effectively at the front. Undulation is not our best friend for those unfamiliar with that word. That's that's rolling hills, uh, essentially. So up, down, up, down. That's undulation. And that's not our best friend. It really does not fit our team's profile very well. However, I actually think this particular stage and short, punchy finish does suit us rather well. 8.4k to go, for one thing. Other teams aren't interested in pushing based on the profile right now, and that's giving us an opportunity to actually get out front with a proper lead out. Uh, and speaking of proper lead out, we don't need to be going quite 99 either as we set ourselves up. Now, Kudos, that's, that's our puncher. That's our lead guy there. But Gibbons with a plus one and okay, good things happening today actually looks pretty decent to maybe survive and hang on the climb. And if he can, then he gives us something sprint capability wise 3.4k we're starting to go uphill i'm going to go to three and then have abdia take over and go about a 98 here 2.6k and we're starting to get into a group that's pretty good on their uh, capability sprint wise in fact he's done a lot of damage to even his own teammates here 1.5k now and we split the field oh we have split the field <laughs> We have split the field. Uh, Arafane, stop. You guys, you three, just go auto. Uh, don't lead anyone back towards us. 1.2K. I've got my three guys here. And Zarai is going to go about a 97 now. 1.1K. Now there's going to be a sprint coming, so these guys are going to be closing things down. Zarai, use your last ounce of energy to set up a sprint. Kudos. Let's go, Gibbons. Let's go. I told you I thought the profile suited us. This short little punchy finish. And it's going to be a win. It is going to be a win. Zarai is going to hang on and take the win ahead of Kudos. Gibbons almost grabs third as Kovili comes late and takes it. Uh, Gibbons does get a top five, though. Little time separation. I I'd love it if we see a little time separation. It would put us in a very strong position. 10 bonus seconds for the win. We've got the win. We've got that secured. We might be speeding right to the final stage and see if we're, you know, in that top 10, top five, get another plus. Wouldn't that be a fantastic start to the year if we achieve both first objectives, which we now have done, but also get a bonus plus in noteworthy results to both of those races? That puts you in cruise control to, to get through the year and see your finances improve for the coming season. Love it. Absolutely love it. Fantastic start to the year. We do gain an eight second time gap, so we, we actually pick up 18 seconds on this one. And Lawless still leads. Lawless is still the overall race leader. That part, not so concerning. This is about securing a top five, top three. So Zarai and Kudos are both in great position, both on the podium. Gibbons is also right there, but without any... Uh, time bonuses he'll slip right down the order when we start quick sending seven riders remain at the top with some sort of time gain but yeah that was that was a big stage profile of stages four and five did not favor us we did not do well kudos ends up 15th overall ayuso taking the win no matter how you look at it though our first two objectives of the year were the two biggest objectives of the year and we succeed at both and then we even on top of that grab noteworthy results. In fact, look at that route of Oman. We got the top 25 and wear the climber's jersey pluses. So we still managed to get pluses. Three pluses in noteworthy results. We only had three or four all of last year. Right now, of course, with our two objectives and both succeeding, we have a maximum evaluation. In fact, we have a 100% evaluation i don't know if we're going to hang on to that in the races to come especially if i start quick simming these things a bit but i do think that it's probably going to be a smart thing to try to do circuit laguna and tarango along the way just to help maintain that 100 percent evaluation before we sit back and and you know quick sim our way to uh, say about 
here, or we have another key one, depending on what's happening over those next few races. Season's definitely starting off very well, though. Laguna, we need a top 10, and some riders have a break that's hanging on for the time being. It's actually been a difficult chase, and there's a lot of fatigue. None of our guys are looking great right now. Ashimwe on a minus four is already done. Arafane is the guy I want leading us out, but Gibbons and the rest of these guys are just not quite in position as of yet as we come down the hill. We had a hill. I wanted to get through that hill first. Now, Davids is the guy I do want getting to the front, but Arafane uh, is also actually struggling. Gabrayevet's going to be taken over here shortly. We're trying to go 99. It's still 49 seconds to those guys and 8k to go, and it's on a slight hill here. Uh, Gabrayevet still not in position, but something's got to give. Something's got to give here. Gabrayevet finally in position. 6.4k. We're going to have him take over. There are three guys behind him and 6k to go and one little hill. Kudos. You want to get him up the hill and then release Gibbons over the top of that. That's that's the ideal scenario. As you can see, some stronger guys are actually trying to attack here. That's how weak our chase is right now. 3.6k. We're almost there. But we're still not in position. Abdiya, 2.7. Not sprinting. Not sprinting, but going full gas. Come on, find some space here. Catching those guys at the front. And now pushing 1.6k, sprinting, Abdiya, setting up Kudos. This is the hill. We're on it. Kudos, pulling uh, Gibbons. Those front two guys look like they might just hang on. We're getting right over the top here, and Gibbons releases. It's going to be a top 10, though. We catch the break. Bruno, Bruno Messo takes the win. We're not going to get a top five here. That's David Vanderpool. Gibbons does get a top five. He squeezes into fifth place. We needed a top 10, so that will be a super success. That's a very good result. Looking at the profile, I was hopeful that we could maybe com contend for the win, but we never could quite get to the front. It was a hard chase. There was a lot of guys with much better flat ratings than what we had that we're able to do a little bit more than what we could. But ultimately, it's about the sponsor. <laughs> it's about getting that evaluation that we couldn't get last season. And we are absolutely cruising towards that because top 10 scales. Everything scales, okay? So for those who are new to the game, you have a win, and then you have a top three. You have a top five. And you have a top 10. Then you have a top 25. So those are the stages at which things are evaluated when it comes to the sponsor or if you're in pro cyclist mode and it comes to those objectives. So first, third. So there is absolutely no difference between finishing second or third. Either you win or you get a podium. Likewise, there's no difference between fourth and fifth. You get a top five. There's no difference between six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. They are all considered the same in evaluation. So it's top ten. And then from 11th on down to 25th, same thing. If your objective is top ten to succeed, you need to finish sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth. To have a super success, you need a top five or better. A win is the same as a top five in the minds of the sponsor. So we got the top five. We got the super super success just. So that was awesome. And the same, a failure is 11th and below. Now, some of your evaluations have a partial failure. And the partial failure is where you're one step below, but not completely missing out by being two steps or below. Depends on the objective on that one. But an example stage win you must win a stage but you'll get a partial failure if you get a top three on a stage so a second or third here we get the super success and at the moment anyway it feels like we are cruising towards a maximum evaluation for this second season all it took was a couple better writers and we find ourselves competitive at the continental level
Speaking of competitive at a continental level, last season we scored about 220 points or so. We already have 207 on the 8th of March. So we've nearly matched what we did all of last year in a very short period of time. Uh, we are a good 50 spots or so up the rankings or 35 spots up the rankings from last season. It's a good year. It's a good start to our year. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.